Hi hello welcome to learn stroke ias classes by arjun you're listening to the daily hindu news analysis for current affairs news leads with arjun r shankar today the date is 16th december 2022 and let's check out and before you go on we have a wonderful segment called editorial summaries for ias so um, please do check out the channel there are videos for editorial summaries which are very important and let's check the important news leads of the day China builds ropeway roads near tri junction so recently the china india uh, especially in the uh, the line of actual control has been uh, discussed very heavily because that is the reason why china has set up ropeway near the torsa nala so there is another important area called uh, where is this torsa nala and where is yangtze area because china has actually set up ropeway near the torsa nala on its side of the india bhutan china tri junction so the torsa nala or the nala is actually on the side of the tri junction and it is creating more infrastructure along the entire eastern eastern sector of the lis the lac because uh, and uh, uh, what is happening is uh, in the yangtze area of tawang sector in arunachal pradesh so yangtze is basically in the tawang sector in arunachal pradesh so you can just see this you can see how the yangtze river flows through uh, the area in china and uh, near to the uh, tawang sector uh, you can see that china has stepped up patrols to assert the claims in the area so uh, you know what is actually annoying the chinese army is that indian army holds the dominating heights which give a complete view of the bowl for india so the yangtze region uh, is actually located in 30 to 35 kilometers northeast of tawang and is an it, it's an altitude of 17000 feet so a lot of activity is actually going on in the torsa nala uh, near doklam and uh, so china is trying to build up a lot of infrastructure in the nearby area so that can be seen as the chinese advancement gs paper to international relations next is uh, regarding the states can enact laws on uniform civil code uh, says uh, the minister in rajya sabha so this brings us to an important question what is article 44 of the indian constitution and what is the uniform civil code because uh, the uh, the minister said that the states are empowered to enact personal laws that decide issues such as succession marriage divorce and to secure a uniform civil code so you should know what you mean by article 44 of the indian constitution what is uniform civil code and states are getting power to enact personal laws that decide issues so you should also known as the personal law such as the uh, uh, intestacy succession succession will joint family partition marriage divorce or uh, anything relating to the entry 5 of list 3 concurrent list of the 7th schedule of the constitution so uh, anything that relate to entry 5 of the list 3 concurrent list so that definitely since it is in the concurrent list that gives the state to legislate upon them so the states uh, since it is in the concurrent list some of the entries are in the concurrent list the state is also empowered to legislate on them and uh, you should know that uh, uh, uttarakhand was the first to set up a panel to explore the possibility of a common civil code even the gujarat uh, has also assembly government has also announced his intention you know just after the assembly election so you should know even the states can do it because some of the entries are in the concurrent list and the, the uniform list the uniform civil code is actually uh, would be uh, creating for a one law for india uniform civil code means uniform law one law for india which would be applicable to all religious communities matters such as communities in matters such as the marriage divorce inheritance adoption and the court comes under article 44 of the indian constitution which lays down that the state shall endeavor to secure uniform civil code so obviously it is a state which is actually giving a importance so the uh, the uh, uniform civil code is as old as a report of 1835 stressing for the unifi- uniformity in the codification of indian law so this is very old mm-hmm. moving on is the next important one is regarding 14 maharashtra villages want to merge with the bordering telangana 
so this is gs paper 2 states law boundary so you should know that amid the boundary law at least 14 villages bordering telangana demanded inclusion as the maharashtra you know people from uh, uh, some of the villages from maharashtra were attracted to telangana because of the development and welfare scheme like the raitu bandhu the dalita bandhu raitu bima free power supply to farmers and uh, initiated by the telangana chief minister chandrasekhar rao so the welfare activities in telangana has attracted most of the maharashtra villages to come to telangana since uh, both the states is involved in a territorial dispute over an 80 square kilometer stretch of land located on the border of the uh, the chandrapura district and the uh, the kumram bhim asifabad district in neighboring so uh, both of them have their own place and is pending in the supreme court and most of the villages in these areas have dual uh, voter cards and have many ration cards from both the states so most of the people want to stay in maharashtra but some of the people want to go to telangana so know this perspective of uh, boundaries and borders new land laws benefit outsiders jnk party so this is another important aspect regarding gs paper 2 laws especially in the jammu kashmir region so this talks about the uh, the new land laws which have ended you can see the new land laws have ended owners right to hold on to properties on lease in the union territory and they pave the way to outsource these properties afresh so all the people they have to you know they have uh, ended owners right the owners have lost their right to lease because many of the properties in Jammu and Kashmir were actually on lease and the new rule which is called the JNK land grant rules 2022 is replacing the Jammu Kashmir land grants rule 1960 so JNK land grant rules 2022 is replacing the 1960 which was, which was previously having a very liberal lease policy such as 99 years lease period and extendable so everything is now changing so the new law states that all leases except subsisting or expired residential leases including leases granted under the JNK land 1960 as well as leases expired shall not be renewed and shall stand determined so it's a big blow now you cannot have a 99 year lease so important keep in mind the JNK Jammu and Kashmir land grant rules 1960 is been replaced by JNK land grant rules 2022 so this is something that is happening in Kashmir and moving on to the next important one GS paper 1 history and culture Tamil Nadu stops auction of stolen Nataraja idol in France so definitely this we need to know because the uh, the IWCID the idol wing CID the idol wing CID of Tamil Nadu police successfully stopped the scheduled auctioning of a bronze idol of Nataraja by the Christie's.com in France because the rare variety bronze idol was suspected to have been stolen from uh, the Kayatar in Tutukudi district half a century ago. Because the Christie's.com France was listing this Shiva Nataraja idol for around uh, say 200,000 to 300,000 euros approximately 1.76 to 2.64 crore. The bronze idol belongs to the Vijayanagara period and this we need to know the IWCAD is the idol wing CID and what do you know about the Nataraja Vigraha so what is the Nataraja Vigraha that you have to know in this regard is Nataraja is actually uh, the Shiva a symbol which is which combines uh, Shiva's role as a creator preserver and destroyer and uh, it, it is a very popular during the uh, it evolved during the time of the Cholas the Shiva's dance with a flamingo halo and Shiva holding, having a holding an Agni uh, with a lower height and which is actually having an Abhaya Mudra and even dwarf like figures are being trampled by his foot. You can see the foot which represents the Apasmara Purusha, the illusion and uh, the energy of his dance makes his hair fly to the different sides. So uh, it's a very popular image of Nataraja Vigraha so popular during the chola time so know about this as a part of indian culture moving on to the next is uh, madhya pradesh minister seeks police verification to prevent love jihad another important news from gs paper one society because you need to know what do you mean by love jihad 
all you have to do is now marriage registrars and other institution responsible for solemnizing marriages in madhya pradesh may have to get a police verification so this is to prevent love jihad which is a term to describe forcible or fraudulent religious conversion by marriage so by getting police verification done marriages where actual identity is hidden could be prevented so is this a good thing because now uh, anybody who want to uh, get into a marriage everybody will have to get a police verification so we really hope that this can be a uh, what is your opinion regarding this so they say it's a security measures to uh, reveal the real identity and in case of a fraudulent thing you can actually hold or get hold to that so moving on next is need a new appointment system to fill vacancies in higher judiciary gs paper to polity the law minister uh, kiran riju is at said the raj sabha and uh, asked if the government would revive the national judicial appointments commission mr riju said that there are several several uh, retired judges people political parties have opined that striking down the act by the supreme court was not correct so this again brings us the question of a uh, national judicial appointment commission which the government wants and the supreme court wants the collegium system the uh, the government wants the national judicial appointment commission system so he said there is a lot of pendency you say that there were around 777 judges are working in the high court against the sanction strength of 1100 leaving a vacancy of around 331 or 30% is vacancy so uh, it is basically said that the government has limited powers to fill the vacancies because the center cannot look for names other than those recommended by the collegium so the government is telling that there is large number of vacancies still being reported and uh, if there would have been national judicial appointment commission they could have actually filled the vacancies and had a better judicial system where the collegium system by the supreme court and the court say that their system is the best system so the time will reason the, the ongoing procedures and time will tell us what is happening in this whole thing next is broadcasting by center and states has to come under prasar bharati the information broadcasting minister so this brings us to important article regarding gs paper 2 regulatory body and law what is prasar bharati you need to know what you mean by prasar bharati because the uh, inb minister said that all the existing broadcast of central government ministries state union territories governments and related entities would be brought under the prasar bharati route because you know recently uh, the senior uh, rajya sabha member uh, anbumani ramadas of the kalvi tv an educational channel run by tamil nadu government the minister said under the advisory dated 2022 you know this also uh, the entry of central government state union territory has brought even the broadcast or educational purposes should be done through the prasar bharati and they, they also said that uh, you take the uh, tri the telecom regulatory authority of india's view the tri also had a discussion and said that the state and central government if they have to run educational purpose channel even for non commercial purpose it should be through the uh, it should be through the prasar bharati route so whatever happens even the education channel for even non commercial purpose anything that you do state government central or even union territory government whatever things that you do should be through the prasar bharati route so what do you mean by the prasar bharati prasar bharati is the india's largest public broadcasting agency it's a statutory body set up by the act of parliament and comprises the doordarshan television network and all india radio so the prasar bharati 1990 act was established and uh, uh, all the property assets debts liabilities money as well as suits legal proceedings involving agashavani all india radio and doordarshan are given to prasar bharati so everything should be prasar bharati route as the uh, gs paper 2 law and regulatory body moving on next is uh, india test fires agni 5 ballistic missile with 5000 km range gs paper 3 space and defense you need to know that uh, 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 the agni is actually a nuclear capable ballistic missile and can strike targets up to 5000 kilometers so agni 5 can almost bring the entire asia including the northernmost part of china and regions in europe under its striking range so it was launched from the apj abdul kalam island of odisha so this is a big achievement it, so please remember agni is a nuclear capable ballistic missile so next is regarding the uh, 
an important article regarding the a discussion to include Hathi community, Hathi community to ST list. So what do you mean by the Hathi community? So the tribal minister Arjun Munda moved a motion in Lok Sabha to begin the discussion on the uh, scheduled tribes order amendment bill 2022 to include the Hathi community of the Sirmao districts in the uh, ST list of Himachal Pradesh. So you need to know about the Hathi community as they are basically, uh, they got their name from the tradition of selling homegrown vegetables, crop, meats, wool in a small markets or small towns. So the Hatti men traditionally usually wear a white headgear on ceremonial occasions and uh, they are actually found in the Himachal Uttarakhand border in the basin of Giri and the Thorn River, both the tributaries of Yamuna. And they are basically governed by a traditional council called uh, the Khumbli. The Khumbli which are like the Kaps of Haryana. So the Hatties are basically found in the regions of uh, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, etc. And they are seeking the entry into, from 1967 itself, they want to get into the scheduled list, scheduled cast list. And uh, now uh, the Hatti community is actually being discussed, Hatti. Next is Supreme Court to hear plea against poll bond scheme next month. So Supreme Court examined, you know, decided to have a petition accusing the electoral bond scheme of illegally facilitating anonymous donation to political parties before polls have come. So the illegal donation of the uh, the electoral bond scheme has created a big time issue regarding this. And you need to know the Supreme Court agreed to examine in January a plea to refer to a constitution bench accusing the electoral bond scheme of illegally facilitating anonymous donations. So this brings us to an important area. What do you mean by electoral bonds? The electoral bonds was introduced in 2018 as an alternating to cash donations to clean the system of political funding in the country because parties, political parties receive funds from various areas. So electoral bond was a good system, uh, you know, where you can, uh, it's an alternating to the cash donation. So you can see that the uh, SBI is authorized to issue and encash these bonds. And uh, only those political parties that are registered under section 29A of the RPA, the Representation of People Act, and uh, which has secured not less than 1% of votes polled in the last general election or state assembly election, are eligible to receive electoral bonds. So there are different denominations which you can get and give it to the elect political parties through electoral bond. So please here, read it from GS paper to polity perspective. Moving on, the uh, the, uh, it's actually the public servants can be found guilty of graft on circumstantial proof. I think uh, a constitution bench of the Supreme Court held that uh, the demand and acceptance of bribe or illegal gratification by a public servant can be inferred by a court on circumstantial proof in the absence of a direct evidence. So this is a good move because the article according to the Supreme Court uh, the Supreme Court believes that a lot of public servants are taking bribe, which is actually corrupting the whole democratic system. So in order to be very fair to them, any acceptance of bribe or anything related by a public servant can be inferred by a court without evidence or just circumstantial proof is more than enough because the prosecution can prove its case of corruption with the help of any other witness oral or documentary evidence or even circumstantial evidence in case uh, the complaints and the complainants have turned hostile. So even without direct evidence, uh, even with the oral witness or oral documentary evidence or circumstantial evidence is more than enough to, you know, find guilty of a, a public servant because public servants taking bribe is not at all acceptable in a democracy like India. Supreme Court has strongly regarded this article. GS paper 2 law. Next is regarding the uh, next is regarding the uh, uh, the curbing air pollution in India needs efforts across South Asia. So this talks about an important concept. GS Paper Three: Energy, Environment, and uh, Clean Energy. It has air pollution has talked about one thing. What is an air shed? India has around six large air sheds. Some of them shared with Pakistan. So, what do you mean by an air shed? Because air shed is a part of the atmosphere. And the region over which the part of the atmosphere or a region over which airborne gases can travel and wind up in a body of water, it's called airshed. 
so the region over which airborne gases can travel and wind up in a body of water is airshed so the world bank defined airshed as a common geographical area where pollutants get trapped creating similar air quality for everyone that's a most simple one so the uh, airshed is a common geographical area where pollutants get trapped creating similar air quality for everybody in that region and uh, uh, you can see that uh, uh you india has six large airsheds some of them are shared with pakistan you can see that when the wind direction was predominantly northwest to the southeast 30% of air pollution in indian punjab came from the punjab province in pakistan and some of them came from the larger cities of bangladesh so you can see that india there, there are six major air shields airsheds in india in south asia and uh, uh, most importantly uh, they are called as the west or central igp or indo gangetic plain so the western western central igp includes punjab haryana rajasthan chandigarh delhi up and eastern igp or central I igp or uh, they include uh, the important areas and middle eastern areas like uh, maharashtra central indus river plain pakistan the western part etc so there are different airsheds in uh, even india six large airsheds which are there in india so no from gs paper 3 environment perspective so the region over which airborne gases can travel and wind wind up wind up in a body of is called the airshed and the, the world bank defined airshed as a common geographical area where pollutants get trapped next is regarding the fiji opposition the fiji opposition calls for a halt in election count after anomaly so that brings us where is fiji located you can see the the map of uh, uh, the world